Welcome and thank you all so much for joining us today for the first session of a four part series discussing the new American plate model recommended by the American Institute for Cancer Research. Okay. Um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Allie Farley and I have been working with Massey Cancer Center for just over two years. I am a dietitian working with the integrative health team. I'm not actually seeing patients one-on-one -on -one and providing counseling in the clinic. I'm actually offering outreach education and opportunities to those individuals who are either unfinished with treatment, maybe going through treatment, or have had a loved one or family member that have had, has had cancer. Our objectives today are really to summarize the research behind the new American plate, report cancers that are at increased risk due to overweight and obesity, define the key components of the new American plate, discuss the benefits of adapting to the new American plate, assess the importance of food choices and portion sizes, we'll list some substitutions for healthier alternatives to implement while cooking and baking, help you develop a shopping guide that will meet your nutrition related goals, review a sample meal plan, and then also recognize the role of physical activity. So let's just dive right in and briefly address the research behind the recommendations we will review today for the new American plate. The plate model was formatted from information collected and reviewed by the American Institute for Cancer Research and the World Cancer Research Fund. From this review, a panel of individuals developed a report that has been continuously updated entitled Diet, Nutrition, Physical Activity, and Cancer, a Global Perspective. This report was first initiated in 1997, then reevaluated in 2007, and most recently updated in 2018. The report has a number of interrelated general purposes, one is to explore the extent to which food, nutrition, physical activity, and body composition modify the risk of cancer. The report specifies recommendations based on solid evidence, which when followed could be expected to reduce your incidence of cancer. The recommendations are supported by experimental evidence from human and animal studies. On this chart, you will see the recommendations that were formatted from the global report. Before going through each step, I wanna point out the word at the top of the chart, prevention. Prevention can be defined as not the mean or the elimination of cancer, but the reduction in its occurrence. So I wanna be careful with how that word is used. To prevent cancer, people should aim to follow as many of the 10 cancer prevention recommendations as possible. However, any change you make that works towards meeting the goals set out to the, by the recommendations by this group can reduce your cancer risk. So looking through these, we're gonna kind of touch base on the majority of these recommendations, but first one being be a healthy weight. You wanna keep your weight within a healthy range and avoid gain and especially in adulthood. You wanna be physically active. It's best to move rather than be sitting. You wanna eat a diet rich in whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and beans. And we're gonna talk about how we can accomplish that today. We're gonna to want to limit the consumption of red and processed meat, limit the consumption of sugar sweetened beverages, limit your co consumption of those convenient foods or fast foods and other processed foods, high in fat, starches, or sugars. Limit alcohol consumption. You want to Follow the recommendations that are set forth by your care provider and then talk to them, them about the rec dec these recommendations that you find on this chart. You do not want to use supplements for cancer prevention. Supplements are not a sole source for cancer prevention. Supplements actually can be harmful in some way. So anytime you want to ask any questions about herbal supplements or taking a supplement, you must talk to your care provider or care team. Another side note is for mothers, breastfeed your baby if you can. Not smoking and avoiding other exposures to tobacco and excess sun are also important in reducing your cancer risk. 
So as mentioned in the previous slide, the first recommendation for prevention is a healthy weight status. After not smoking, being at a healthy weight is the most important thing you can do to prevent cancer. Being overweight or obese can increase your risk for 12 different cancers. You can see on this chart, it identifies those different cancers throughout the body. Just for example, liver cancer, kidney, stomach, colorectal, esophageal, mouth, gallbladder, ovarian, and endometrial cancers. You want to move more and you want to eat smart. So we'll identify how we can eat smart to prevent these cancers. As well as it's important to note that seven in 10 Americans currently are identified as overweight or obese and 52% of them don't really even know of the connection or link of obesity and cancer. So how do we, how do, how, how does excess body fat increase your cancer risk? Well, what we currently know is that fat cells have the ability to produce the hormone estrogen, which can promote cell growth, and that body fat can also produce proteins that cause inflammation and insulin resistance. So there is continued research undergoing to clearly more identify weight and cancer risk, but the, the risks have been identified and there is strong research behind it. So what causes an individual to gain weight, be overweight or obese? Well, there are a lot of factors that play a role into weight gain, overweight and obesity. On this image, you will see some of the key factors that may lead to an unhealthy nutritional status. You see a traditional Western diet, fast food, screen time in both adults and children, and then sugar sweetened drinks, as well as limited activity can all increase your risk. Some ways to decrease your risk is, be is being active, walking, aerobic and physical activity are important. Foods containing dietary fiber, including those in our diet a more Mediterranean type dietary pattern or a plant-based diet type diet, and then having being breastfed. Now that we know the research clearly states weight status is important, how do we maintain and or obtain a healthy weight status? Well, eating well is step one. The American Institute for Cancer Research New American Plate is a plant-based diet that puts the research for reducing cancer risk into action. It can be a plant-focused diet with plant foods only, or it can include moderate amounts of animal-based foods. Too often, the traditional American plate is not a healthy plate. Many Americans have overly indulged on fast food or processed foods. A typical home-cooked dinner is often planned around a large portion of either red meat or poultry with some potatoes or other starchy vegetable on the side, and sometimes a small serving of a green or non-starchy vegetable. Meals like these often contain too many calories and not enough healthy protecting vitamins and minerals. The purpose of the New American Plate is to encourage a variety of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and beans, as you can see on this image. These foods are rich in fiber, vitamins, and other natural substances called phytochemicals that help keep us in good health and may protect us against cancer. They are also naturally low in calories. The new American plate demonstrates healthy choices for the proportion of different foods on your plate and for the portions you eat. Aim for vegetables, fruits, and whole grains or beans to provide two thirds or more of each plate with one third or less coming from animal protein. This plate method emphasizes choosing foods with plenty of fiber, nutrients, and plant compounds, limits foods that increase the risk of cancer, and helps you reach and maintain a healthy weight. Changing dietary habits isn't always easy. A transition to your main goal will help with greater success. So let's take a look at this transition stage, the different stages for transition. Stage one is the old American plate. This plate has, it, what this plate offers a large portion of eight to 12 ounce steak, the remainder is filled with a hearty helping of buttery mashed potatoes and peas. Although this meal is 
a home style favorite, it is high in calories and low in phytochemicals and fiber. A few changes, however, will bring it closer to the new American plate. Stage two is what we call our transitional plate. This meal features a more moderate four to six ounce serving of meat, a large helping of green beans, perhaps pre prepared with herbs and a serving of brown rice. This plate has taken small steps into the right direction, but doesn't yet take full advantage of all the nutritious recommendations that could be offered. Finally, stage three, the new American plate. We can all see this plate features a wider variety of foods, starting with an appropriate three ounce serving of meat, in addition to two kinds of vegetables, such as broccoli and squash, which increase the proportion of plant-based foods, completing the meal with a healthy serving of a tasty whole grain, such as brown rice, or maybe even barley or quinoa. This meal can also be viewed as a one pot meal. It doesn't always have to look like that first plate. This plate can be seen as like a stir fry. You can reduce the animal foods and increase your plant-based ingredients without even noticing. This plate is full of colorful vegetables and hearty whole grains, all offering cancer fighting vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. Your meat is not used as a main ingredient, but as a complement, adding a bit of flavor and extra substance. When adjusting your meals to include more plant-based foods, even small changes can provide real health benefits. So as you start to transition from the old plate or the traditional plate, keep this checklist items in mind. So for example, you wanna focus on a visual approach to eating for better health. Choose foods that reduce risk for cancer and other chronic diseases. Eat a sensible proportion for healthy weight and use proportion for a balanced diet. It's a great, a great way to get started is setting small goals and trying to accomplish small challenges that you can aim for yourself. For example, at each meal, I will eat at least one portion of colorful vegetables or fruits, or I will eat one serving of whole grains per day. And then challenge yourself. I will add extra veggies to soups, stews, salads and casseroles, or my whole grain portions will, will be increased with each meal. Sorry guys, there, oh, I apologize, there we go. So we wanna set goals and challenge ourselves, as I mentioned, but also be aware of the recommendations you should aim for. For example, the American Institute for Cancer Research advises at least two and a half cups of non-starchy vegetables and fruits today. Starchy vegetables would be something like your potatoes, white and sweet potatoes, um, corn, maybe carrots, acorn, or butternut squash. By including fruits or vegetables at every meal, it's easy to reach two and a half cups or even more a day, which is even better. The USDA recommends three and a half cups of, of any vegetables and fruits per day. Vegetables and fruits provide vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals that protect the body's cells from damage. You wanna eat a variety to get the widest possible array of protective nutrients and phytochemicals. Be sure to include vegetables that are dark, green, and leafy, as well as deep orange or even red. Whole food sources are best. One cup of juice, however, 100% fruit or vegetable that is, does count toward your daily goal but most of your servings should come from solid fruits or vegetables. It is also advised to round out each plate with other nutrient-rich rich, plant-based foods each day. So for example, whole grains. These are types of foods such as oatmeal, whole grain breakfast cereals, whole wheat bread, popcorn, brown rice, barley, and even quinoa. You can see from this chart that I've provided to you on this slide that you can reduce cancer risk with whole grains as well as dietary fiber. There is strong evidence that whole grains decrease the risk of colorectal cancer. Consumption of 90 grams or three servings of whole grain foods per day reduces your risk of colorectal cancer by 17%. So what is a serving of whole grains? Well, perhaps one slice of 100% 100% 100 
whole grain bread, a half a cup of cooked brown rice, three cups of popped popcorn, or a six inch corn tortilla. Now being careful though, because grain portions can add up quickly and make your calories increase. So be aware of the types of whole grains that you're eating. So for example, if you wanted to have a large bagel or a full bowl of whole grain cereal that you pour yourself, you may actually consume two to three grain portions just from those items. So be cautious of serving sizes. Dietary fiber is also important. 30 grams of dietary fiber per day can lower your cancer risk. Foods that consume fiber are things such as avocado, raspberries, beans, oatmeal, and even green peas. Another plant-based nutrient that can be incorporated onto our plates are beans and or legumes, such as dried or canned beans, peas, lentils, and soybeans. I try to encourage individuals to choose at least one meal a day where a plant-based protein can be substituted for the traditional animal protein food choices. These items are great choices. We want to finally, we want to think of meat as a side dish or condiment, meat on the side. So choose fish or poultry more often than red meat. You want to limit the consumption of red meat to no more than 12 to 18 ounces cooked per week. So that would be including three ounce servings of red meat and only six of your 21 weekly meals. I included this chart because I think it's important to be aware of the fact that red and processed meat are do give you a higher risk of possibly developing cancer. That's why we have that limitation of 12 to 18 ounces. So examples of red meat might be beef, pork, or lamb. And examples of processed meat, which we want to avoid consuming as much as possible, is ham, bacon, and hot dogs. There is strong evidence that eating too much red meat and even small amounts of processed meat can lead to colorectal cancer. Now that we know what types of foods to include on our plate, it's important to understand that it is not just what we eat that matters, but also how much. The research used for the new American plate identified that Americans eat several hundred more calories each day than we did 30 years ago. Using measuring cups and spoons are great tools for at home. While shopping, read food labels, and while out, keep the visuals on this chart in mind. So looking through this chart, you can see that, for example, top vegetables, a serving would be about one cup or about one baseball or a rounded handful. For raw leafy vegetables, you can have two cups or two baseballs or two fists. For a sweet potato, it's actually half a cup cooked or one medium and one baseball. Um, fresh food is about a half a cup, about one small piece or half a baseball on a rounded handful. Um, dried fruit is about a fourth of a cup or a scant handful. Pasta, rice, cooked cereal, always encourage those 100% whole grain items of those nutrients is gonna be half a cup or half a baseball or a rounded handful. Um, ready to eat cereals, these are really gonna vary depending on the food labels and the type of item that you're choosing. So check those labels. It could be anywhere from a fourth of a cup to one and one fourth cups. And again, try to choose whole grain. Um, when it comes to bread, one ounce, about one small slice dried beans, half a cup cooked, or half a baseball or a rounded handful, nuts and seeds, about a fourth of a cup or half a golf ball and a scant handful, meat, poultry, and seafood, um, three ounces cooked or about four ounces raw because it is gonna lose a little bit of its weight when it's cooked, is about a deck of cards. I also like to tell people too, if you don't have overly large hands, about the palm of your hand is the size of three ounces as well. When it comes to milk and yogurt, try to choose more of your low fat dairy options um, for fewer calories, but one cup or eight ounces is a serving. So how can we cut portion sizes? I mentioned when shopping, um, some things you should do and when you're doing it at home, but this kind of gives you a little bit more detail on this list. 
So when we're shopping, we want to make a shopping list of healthy foods for the week on um, packaged foods, check the nutrition facts label for the serving size and note the calorie count for this for each portion. You wanna buy a greater variety of vegetables for snacks and meals. Avoid buying unhealthy snacks like um, chips or cookies and ice cream and buy healthy ones like carrot sticks, hummus, fruit, low fat yogurt and whole grain crackers. You wanna choose whole grain products and avoid buying highly processed foods. And buy only what you need. Having too much on hand can lead to eating larger portions. I know right now we're probably buying more than what we need when we're going grocery store, being in the being that we are in a pandemic and encouraged to purchase enough for two week time periods. But in the future, that's something to keep in mind. When you're preparing food, use your measuring cups and spoons. Um, cook in calorie saving ways such as um, baking, steaming, roasting, or even sauteing. Um, you want to add new combinations of colorful vegetables to soups, stews, pastas, and even rice. When you're eating at home, use small plates and glasses to help right size your portions so you don't feel deprived when eating smaller portions. Trick your brain by filling up that smaller plate rather than putting smaller sizes on our large plates. Try to eat slowly and pause between getting seconds. Eat balanced meals that include beans, fish, poultry, or lean meats, as well as fruits or vegetables, and a serving of whole grains to satisfy your hunger. Many people find that eating a healthy breakfast makes it easier to choose healthier portions later in the day. So start your day off right. Um, at meals, leave higher calorie dishes on the counter and put vegetables on the table so they're easier to reach for seconds. And you can avoid creamy and cheesy dressings and choose plain or reduced fat vinaigrettes or even make your own. Um, use herbs instead of salts for more flavor. I really think a lot of different herbs and spices go a long way. I use garlic and onion a lot because I feel like they add a lot of flavor. Um, and then also when you're dining out, load salads with vegetables and skip kind of the higher fat meats and cheeses. Ask for dressings on the side so you can add as much dressing as you would like or even just dip each bite or every other bite into the dressing. Share your entrees with people. And then also maybe even ask for a takeout box when your food comes. So you can go ahead and pack up some of that food because you know how much you should be consuming now. And then finally, staying positive. Forbidding certain foods may backfire. Instead, you may indulge in a, um, small high calorie treats sometimes and savor it. If you do overindulge without intending to, use it as a learning experience and move on. Um, if you have heard me talk before, one of the things I always like to tell people and kind of keep as a a rule of thumb is really nourish your body with good food choices. 80% of the time. And then that extra 20% of the time, nourish your soul. If there is a certain food that you really enjoy and it might not fit exactly to this plate method, it's okay to have those foods every now and then. And you may find as you start transitioning to healthier options, those foods that nourish your soul are actually healthier food items than they were originally. You can easily increase nutrition and, and or trim the calories in many of your favorite recipes by using healthy alternatives. So I wanted to point out some alternatives that I actually use in my kitchen. So instead of cream, maybe using evaporated skim milk, instead of cream to thicken soup, you can use puree potatoes, vegetables, or beans. Instead of a stick of margin, margarine, maybe a small amount of olive or canola oil two ounces of mild cheese, substitute with one ounce of reduced fat sharp cheddar. Instead of white rice, try brown rice, quinoa, or even barley. Meat, poultry, or stir fry, try extra firm tofu or chickpeas. With ground red meat, perhaps substitute with ground turkey breast. Sometimes I tell people who have not tried ground turkey breast, maybe to mix it a little bit with the red meat until you get completely over to just using turkey breast. And then substitutions for baking. Instead of butter, perhaps half of unsweetened applesauce and half canola oil. In place of evaporated milk, maybe a skim milk version. 
um, in place of buttermilk, low fat or reduced fat buttermilk, or an equal amount of low fat plain yogurt. All purpose flour, try whole wheat flour. And in place of frosting, which I know is really tasty, but in place of frosting, try sliced fruit, um, pureed fruit, or even really a light dusting of powdered sugar can go a really long way. So how can we get these types of um, meals in our home and how can we work on uh, purchasing the right things in the grocery store? Well, I love this shopping guide that is set forth by the New American Plate. I have this as a PDF, so I will be able to share this with the recorded webinar following our session. So don't feel like you have to just start jotting this down very quickly. I just wanted to point out a few things on this shopping guide that I found helpful. It, first of all, it categorizes everything for you. So you can look at your produce or your fresh or frozen produce, and then your pantry items, your whole grains, those food items that maybe should be considered small bites or in small portions, beverages, animal protein, condiments, and it even allows you to fill in your own additional baking ingredients, spices, household products, and shopping notes. I wanna make a point too, that it identifies your produce as fresh or frozen. Um, you don't always have to buy things fresh. It's okay to purchase things frozen and even canned as well. I know right now where we're trying to keep our kitchens packed for the pandemic that we're currently in, frozen and canned have probably been a more of our go-to, but it is perfectly fine. Also, it doesn't always have to be organic. Um, as long as you're eating for your fruits and vegetables, that's the most important. When you're purchasing frozen, make sure there's not a lot of added seasonings or syrups, um, as well as with the canned. You want to do um, fruit that is in their natural juices or light syrups, and you want to choose vegetables that are either have no added salt or low sodium, and then feel free to rinse them off too. Rinse your canned um, fruits and vegetables too, to take some of those items off of there. But it is perfectly fine to purchase fresh, frozen, or canned. Next, now that we all have a guide to kind of help with grocery shopping, let's look at what a menu following the new American plate method may look like for you at home. So please don't feel like you have to write this all down because I actually have a seven day menu um, in a PDF form that has these two days in it that I will additionally share in um, relation to that shopping guide as well. I want you to keep in mind this menu is based on an 1800 calories per day and you may need more or less really depending on your activity level, gender, height or weight. Also the grain items listed are whole grain while all the dairy choices are low fat. So let's just skim through a couple of these. Perhaps you're already doing some of these things, or maybe you can really amp up some of your meals that you're preparing at home. So for breakfast on Sunday, it specifies one egg scrambled with a fourth a cup of peppers and onions. So you're adding some of your vegetables. This actually has a half a medium whole grain bagel, one tablespoon of light cream cheese, and six ounces of low sodium vegetable cream. Moving on to lunch, let's look at Monday. On Monday, they have two slices of bread, two ounces of roast chicken breast, which we talked about three ounces really being an appropriate serving, so that's great. Two tomato slices, two teaspoons of mayonnaise, half a cup of um, carrots, two tablespoons of a light dip, six ounces of a low fat vanilla yogurt and half a cup of blueberries. Snacking is encouraged, you can still snack. So here are some snack options, six ounces of low fat yogurt, one small banana or one ounce of walnuts. And then finishing off with dinner, um, perhaps we look at Monday again, it has one cup of minestrone soup packed full with vegetables, um, three ounces of baked fish, one cup of steamed broccoli, one tablespoon of Parmesan cheese, half a cup of brown rice, one cup of chopped vegetables, salad, one medium baked apple, and then half a cup of frozen yogurt. So you're still getting some of your sweet in there too. This plate method really allows you to enjoy an endless combination of nutritious foods that leave you well satisfied. 
finishing up our talk today, we're going to review the role really of physical activity. Eating a plant-based diet and reducing large portions are two important strategies to help achieve and maintain good nutritional health. The third strategy is physical activity. So if you look at this graph, it talks about how we can decrease our cancer risk by purely being more active. So if you look at Anne, it looks like she's pretty sedentary. Her whole entire day is in that gray level and her pie chart off to the side is completely gray. So she is at the highest risk for possible cancer. While Mike has improved some of his physical activity by moving around during his break time, incorporating some physical activity with, it looks like he's playing some soccer. However, on his pie chart, the gray is still much larger than the other two, two colors. If you look at Kim, we've definitely improved. We're participating in physical activity, moving around a lot more during our break, and only having a smaller, small amount of being sedentary. So her risk has greatly decreased. And then our final gentleman on here is Joe. We want to be more like Joe because he has the lowest amount of sedentary time and he's be trying to be active and move around during his break and still incorporate physical activity. So some active is better being some active having some activity is better than none. Um, it's important that we understand that the role of physical activity can contribute to weight loss and helps keep weight off. Being consistently active is all about your mindset. Instead of thinking of exercise as a task, consider physical activity fun. For example, if you're not into jogging solo, consider finding a group activity or class that interests you once our social distancing um, recommendations are lifted. Maybe some yoga or dance or even swimming. Physical activity does not only happen within a gym, unless that's something you enjoy doing. One way to really make physical activity part of your lifestyle is to add some accountability. Maybe start getting fit with a friend or someone who you can support, who can support you and help keep you on track. Awareness of your progress is important as well. You can chart your activity in a workout journal or make a game out of counting your steps with a wearable fitness tracker. The majority of our smartphones these days all track our activity. We may not keep our phones on us all the time, but it gives us an idea of where we're at with movement, even during our break time. How much activity do you need? Well, per recommendations, at least 150 minutes, which could be on average, 30 minutes, five days a week, or two and a half hours total per week of moderate intensity aerobic activity. Anything that really gets your heart beating faster counts. It's important to start slow and work up towards that recommendation of at least 150 minutes. Once you have met your goal per week, try to change things up by not always participating in the same type of exercise. It is also recommended to try to incorporate some muscle strength activities as well, at least two days a week if possible. So what is moderate exercise? Well, it can really range um, from a broad scheme of different types of exercise. For example, walking, some yard work, slowly riding a bike, perhaps yoga or swimming. Moderate exercise, you can typically carry on a conversation, but it may take some extra. With vigorous exercise, walking fast or jogging, swimming laps, participating in an organized sport like basketball or tennis, um, conversation requires maximum effort. Some examples of muscle strength exercise that you can incorporate twice a week might be lifting small weights, resistance bands, heavy gardening, digging and shoveling. I've been doing a lot of that now that we've been home more. Um, climbing stairs, walking up hills, maybe push-ups, sit-ups, or even squats. Every little bit of movement really counts. So in review, being overweight can increase your cancer risk. Aim for vegetables, fruits, and whole grains or beans to provide two thirds or more of each plate with only one third or less coming from animal protein. It's not just what you eat that matters, but also how much. Remember those visuals that we talked about today. You can easily increase nutrition or trim the calories in many of your favorite recipes by using the healthier alternatives. 
Eating a plant-based diet and reducing large portions are two important strategies in any weight loss plan or maintaining a healthy weight status. The third strategy is physical activity. Some activity is better than none. I want to make um, want to make everyone aware of the fact that this is a full webinar series. So after today, we'll start back up next week on Wednesday and really dive in a little bit deeper on each component of that plate. Um, next week, we're going to talk more about plant animal based proteins and how we can make some healthy choices, maybe some re review some recipes and some ways to really practice that new American plate. On week three, we're gonna talk about vegetables and fruits. Again, I hope to have you guys some great recipes and suggestions for that too. And finally, on week four, we're gonna go over whole grains. So if you had more questions about each one of those key components and we didn't address it today, please make sure you come back next week and the following weeks. And I hope to be able to address those topics in more detail. I'm going to follow up with some questions. I do want to uh, let you all know, though, when you do sign off, um, there's supposed to be a poll that pops up just to let you know or let us know how things went um, and if there's any suggestions or recommendations that you have or if you would like to um, get an email reminder each week about this webinar. But thank you all so, so much for participating. And if you have any questions, I see a couple pop ups, I'll definitely answer those. But if you have any questions, please just type them into um, the chat box and we can address those as well. Okay, so one of the first questions I have on here is how about water? I drink 80 ounces a day. So that's great. So we want to incorporate water as much as possible. Um, a serving of water is similar to like our drinks we talked about before with dairy, the cup or eight ounces, and you want to aim for at least 12 or uh, eight to 12 servings of water a day. So you're doing, doing a great job. Absolutely. And if you're not a big water drinker, some ways that you can um, drink more water without adding a lot of sugar or sweeteners is maybe infusing it with fruit or vegetables or even mint. It's great. <laughs> so happy you guys enjoyed it. There was a comment about um, the original plate and the steak taking up more than half of the plate. It's hard to believe that that is the uh, mindset that still today many individuals have is that our, our plates have to revolve around that um, piece of meat rather than really revolving around more of our healthy options like your fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Again, we're definitely going to include those PDFs for the meal plan and the shopper's guide. And then I also have just another handout that goes through the healthy plate, everything we talked about today. So please feel free to check those out and make sure you use those at home. I'm gonna stick around for any other questions, but if you don't have any other questions, like I said, when you log off, um, there may be, there should be a poll that pops up. So please fill that out for us. So we know how we can um, continue to provide good education for you guys.